if, if my black T-shirt was um, a sound, what sound would it be? Dead no mouse. Sound. <laughs> Classic. 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 Reggae. Reggae, heavy. Bass drum. Bass drum. OK. Um, if this were, if this color, this creamy color were a smell, what smell would it be? Banana. Milk. Dairy. Milk. Dairy. Dairy. Vanilla. Dairy. Vanilla steak. Okay, vanilla, yeah. If, um, if this clear bottle were a smell, what smell would it be? Iceberg. 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 Sorry? Ozone. Ozone, maybe? We need to get some answers from this. Yeah, thing. from this table too. <laughs> if, if this table, if this table colour, this brown colour, if this were a sound, what sound would it be? Chocolate. What, what sound would it be? Would it be like a high note, or would it no low note? Like a drum, or like a piece of wood? Piece of wood. <laughs> Are you mad? You're mad. Crazy, <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> because that's not a sound. Is that's it? not a sound. <laughs> that's not a sound. <laughs> yeah. But somehow, somehow, you all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And this is this is a good clue because to where creativity comes from. When I first read articles by Stefan Arctander back in the early 70s, he would talk, Stef, not Stefan Arctander, Edmund Runitzka. Edmund Runitzka is one of the most famous perfumers ever, yeah? responsible for um, Mister Dior, Dierissimo, uh, Eau Sauvage. Yeah? He would speak about smells being a spiral smell or a triangular smell. And that seemed a little bit crazy, yeah? And it wasn't <laughs> until, well, I wrote the ABs, training the ABCs of perfumery in Perfumer and Flavorist in 1998 or 1989. And I didn't hear back from the editor for a few months. So I thought he thought I was mad, yeah? And I wrote about synesthesia, was one of the aspects of the ABCs of perfumery. And I didn't hear back. And then after three months, he wrote to me and said, I've just read your article a bit again. And I realized it's like one of the most important articles in the last 75 years, five or six articles in the last 75 years in perfumery. Because what I did was link synesthesia, which is this idea of the connection between our senses and smell. Yeah? Um, but most of us have these connections. When synesthesia is a medical word, and it's when some people fail to separate the senses after, their, after they develop. So, anybody with uh, children? First children, when you first stuck your, your baby in front of a TV, what did she see? Did she, did she see uh, Popeye? Oh, you mean what program? Yeah, no, I mean, generally babies just don't, yeah, they just see like colors and, colors and things. They don't, and it takes a while before they start to, to separate out olive oil and Popeye and Mr. Wimpy, yeah? And give them names and give them, yeah? The same thing happens to us when we develop our senses. We, as we're developing our senses, we, the theory goes is that all our senses are just one sense. And that actually makes quite a lot of sense. Yeah? Because all our DNA is in every cell of our body. All the information for our body is in, in every single cell. Yeah. There was an experiment back in the 70s by a, a program in the UK called Tomorrow's World where they took blind people and they shone colours onto their backs and the blind people could tell them what colours they were. 
there are no eyes in the back. Yeah? But every cell in our body yeah, is, has sense, has senses. Yeah? And the idea that we only use our noses to smell, or our brains, yeah, actually is probably not true. We're probably smelling with every cell of our body. It's just that we have developed specialized organs that are much better at smelling, much better at hearing, much better at touching. But those senses are all in almost every cell of the body. That's why aromatherapy works. Now, interesting thing about synesthesia is that it wasn't really a subject until about <coughs> the year 2000, 10 years ago, something like that, 10, 12 years ago. And now it's taught in schools, in art colleges. Yeah, it's quite a popular, popular subject. If we teach people, kids, eight years old, 10 years old, about what color is that, how does it feel, they have no problem at all. Yeah, there's no hesitation. Like yesterday we said kids do like perfumes in five minutes, ten minutes. Yeah, there's no there's no holding back. The hardest for for this is somebody that's been in higher education for a long time. So the hardest for this to understand <coughs> synesthesia are PhDs, professors. Yeah, because what do, what do you do when you do formal education, you use your right, the left side of your brain, the logical side of your brain. And your right side of your brain gets pushed, pushed back. Yeah? So today's exercise is about wakening the right side of your brain and getting you to not just smell the smell, but feel the smell. Any, any comments, any questions? No? Interesting thing about people with synesthesia, when Einstein died, yeah, they cut his brain up into lots of little pieces and sent them all over the world. And about 15 years ago, that somebody went on a little project to go and find Einstein's brain. And it was on TV. And they found all these pieces. What they found with synesthesics, people who keep the mixture of senses as a definite medical condition, yeah, it's about one in 10,000 people keep this, yeah, is that a part on the right side of the brain f doesn't fold. And when they found Einstein's brain, they found this piece of brain on the right side was not folded. You, mean when it's it, you know the folds in the brain, yeah? It's this flat. piece is like flat, yeah, and smooth. Um, Richard Feynman, Nobel win Prize winning chemist. Last year we were doing this course, same time last year, and I couldn't remember if it was Robert Feynman or Richard Feynman, so I looked him up in Wikipedia, and I read through the article on Wikipedia. The last line said, when Richard Feynman wrote formulas, chemical formulas in black and white, he saw them in colour. Yeah. So he's a synesthesia. But synesthesia is, is a medical word, it refers to people that keep this, fail, fail to make this distinct, complete distinction between, between colours. So the exercise today is to go through the ABCs of perfumery and ask yourself, yeah, page 12. If, if the aliphatic, the aldehyde fluorescence were a colour, what colour yeah, would it be? What sound would it be? What shape would it be? What texture would it be? Yeah? These, these can be any, anything that comes to, come to your mind. Yeah? Anything you feel as you're smelling it. What emotion do you get? Do you feel sad? Do you feel happy? And do you get a specific image? So maybe if you smell iceberg, you see a, a glacier, yeah? A big lump of ice or something, yeah? But 
because this would take too long. Yeah, because this would take too long to do all all 26. What I propose is that you take turns. So if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, like this, yeah? And then if you get time, fill in some of the spaces. <laughs>